Let's also bring on board Mark Farber, editor and publisher of the uh, Gloom, Boom and Doom report. He joins us on the show from Singapore. Mark, hi, morning. The noise for possible December taper is getting louder versus few days back when it was almost consensus that taper will only happen in 2014. On the contrary, you do not expect Fed to taper. Are you still sticking to that viewpoint? Well, basically, uh, we will have next year a new Fed chairman, uh, Janet Yellen, and uh, she may decide uh, as a Fed uh, chairman in order to gain some credibility to kind of implement a cosmetic tapering that would be say 10 billion a month or 20 billion a month. But in general, I think that over time the asset purchases by the Fed will not be reduced, but actually increased. So Mark, does that mean that Asian equities will continue to attract strong front flows? And could that lead to bubble formation? I mean, it's very difficult to say whether we had asset bubbles here in Asia in terms of equities, because uh, yes, since 2009, uh, since the lows, equity prices in countries like Malaysia, Indonesia, the Philippines, Thailand and even Singapore have risen significantly. But the economic uh, prospects have also been quite favorable. And if I look at these uh, economies, then I have to say that for most shares, the valuations are not that high compared to zero interest rates which you get in the banks. So say I can buy Malaysian shares or Singapore shares or Thai shares and have on my portfolio a dividend yield of say 5%. So compare that to uh, government bonds in the US or to Singapore government bonds or cash in the bank, I think uh, the, the valuations are not terribly stretched. I don't think they're cheap. I don't think these stocks will go up, but at least I get the 5% dividend. Mm. Mark, so would you advise investors to shift to gold only? Has it bottomed out? Well, I've been advising people to have uh, an exposure to gold uh, for the last 15 years or so. And uh, the price of gold uh, rose uh, between 1999 and September 2011. Uh, very rapidly from $255 to over $1,900. We're now slightly over $1,300. I think that uh, the price of gold at this level is not terribly high compared to the wealth creation in the world, compared to the expansion of central banks' balance sheets, compared to the debt explosion and so forth and so on. So, yeah, I continue to recommend people that they allocate some of their money to gold. Would you advise investors to own physical gold or gold mining stocks? I prefer physical gold, but I have to say that numerous gold mining shares are now very inexpensive compared, A, to the overall S&P, B, compared to the price of gold. In other words, the share market will always have a fluctuation above uh, on the upside and below on the downside. So like a property stock will go up more than the property price and when the property market goes down, property stocks drop more than the market. Same for gold shares, they go up and down more than the gold price. So coming to India then, Mark, is the worst over? Can it get better growth than 5% which is expected? In general, I think that India could grow at, say, around 7% trend line growth if the conditions were there to facilitate that growth. That would mean essentially a significant reduction in regulation and uh, a significant improvement in infrastructure and capital formation. So India continues to battle with high inflation, high interest rates, currency has improved slightly after correcting sharply. Do you expect some weakness ahead? 
the rupee has been weak uh, since the introduction of the rupee, I think it was 1947. And I think trend-wise, uh, I suppose it will be a weak currency, yes. But uh, obviously, under the new uh, Minister of Finance, maybe we have uh, some stability for a while. Like you mean the new RBI governor. But what's your outlook for Indian equities? We're trading close to lifetime highs, but the participation has been very low. What do you expect from Indian equities? Where do you see them moving in the near term? It is true that the market is uh, in local currency at the relatively elevated level, but not in US dollar terms. In US dollar terms, we're still down something like 40% from the peak a few years ago. So I always argued in India what you get is either a strong currency and a weak stock market or a weak currency and a strong stock market because they adjust to each other. And uh, my feeling is that the market may still go up somewhat uh, I think uh, compared to, say, Chinese companies, Indian companies are by and large well managed. Mm. Mark, finally, crude, uh, crude off late has been slightly toppy. Are you uh, still a uh, uh, bull on crude? Yes, I think that uh, crude oil is probably among the industrial commodities uh, the most attractive commodity because the supply of oil could be interrupted at some point. I'm aware that the production in the U.S. is going up and that the production in Iraq is going up. But by and large, uh, in order to bring on new oil reserves today, the price has to be, say, above $80. So we're not that far above production costs at the present time. Mark, really appreciate you taking the time out and speaking with us today.